My name is Paul Baran. I'm a professor of material science and engineering at the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign. And my group is fundamentally a materials chemistry group. But uh, specifically, what we try to think about is ways to organize matter in three dimensions and to use that organization to lead to new properties. Uh, and photonic crystals are a wonderful example of that, where by creating materials that have variations in refractive index or other optical properties on length scales that are similar to the wavelength of light, new optical phenomena emerge. And so we use our, our background in chemistry and physics to, to create these materials and then study them. What we'd like to do is think about how do we create materials that can interact much more strongly with light. And so either it absorbs the light more effectively or it can concentrate the light into a small region of space. Uh, or perhaps it can take this broadband white light and efficiently collect all the colors of, instead of just efficiently collecting a one wavelength. And so what our structures do is they create this 3D photonic structure out of gallium arsenide, which is a material which has a band gap, which is very appropriate for collecting solar energy. And we're learning now how to create defects photonic defects, not electronic defects, create photonic defects within that structure to capture the light and then extract the electrons. Uh, what we've also done is we've demonstrated the reverse, which is a light emitting diode, which is you put electricity in and get a photon out. And typically materials that are very good at electron to photon conversion also tend to be good at photon to electron conversion. And so what we realized early on in photonic crystals is that we needed a way to create a material which was electrically active. And really we needed a way to make a 3D photonic crystal out of a, what we would call a semiconductor grade material. And so although we had thought about that for a while, we really had no idea of how to do that until a, about uh, four or five years ago now, we started to think about the techniques used by the electronics industry, specifically chemical vapor deposition. And then we realized that if you could tweak the growth parameters just right, you could grow the semiconductor epitaxially. So you could have a single crystal substrate and then grow the semiconductor through some complex morphology, generating a photonic crystal which was made of a single crystal of gallium arsenide. And because it's a single crystal, it has very, very good electronic properties and because we can control the three-dimensional structure, we can impart periodicity at the order of the wavelength of light, we can also control the optical properties. And so, in principle, this sounds very easy, uh, but the problem is, is when you grow this crystal, you're growing it from the gas phase, and so the gas atoms have to diffuse through some complex porous structure, hit the bottom, and grow up. If it starts to grow semiconductor anywhere on this porous host, then it's sort of like an iceberg. It grows at the top and it starts to grow down. And when it does that, it's no longer a single crystal and you get all of the defects back that we needed to, we needed to eliminate. From there, we learned how to dope it, p-type and n-type, embed quantum wells, uh, control the surface chemistry to minimize recombination, to do everything we needed to do to generate a high quality electro-optical material. Now that we've demonstrated that it is possible to make electrically active or electro-optically active 3D photonic crystals, that it will get picked up by a number of labs um, for applications ranging from solar cells to lasers and that they'll be able to build off of, of some of the work we did, much as we built off a lot of the earlier work on photonic crystals. Um, specifically, our interests now are controlling the three-dimensional structure the, what we use now was a colloidal crystal as a template. So the preformed host that the gallium arsenide grew through was a self-assembled colloidal crystal. Those are good structures for doing the basic science, but they have a lot of defects and we can't control the structure that well. So we're looking at better ways to impart new three-dimensional structures. Uh, the other thing we're interested in is extending into new materials. Uh, most of what we've done now are in three fives and specifically gallium arsenide. But there's a, there's a whole set of materials which can be grown epitaxially and have interesting optoelectronic properties. And so we're starting to, both in my lab and work with collaborators who are experts in growth of other materials uh, to see if, how general our process is and whether we can apply it to materials that might work more in the UV or more out in the, the infrared, um, potentially even combining them with um, 
uh, metals uh, with, with other non-semiconductor materials to, to, again, drive emergence of new properties.